um, all years do for a school at some point during the week and it's become a, a big part of, of Roxham. So the origins of Forest School, it's kind of uh, developed from the, the Swedish Forest Schools of the 1950s. In the 80s, um, Denmark uh, adopted it to link in with their early years um, education. Um, and then some professionals from Bridgewater College in Somerset um, went over and saw how it worked with young people there. And they especially considered the impact that it had um, on young people and found that it, um, it benefited those lacking in confidence or with challenging behaviours. So they brought it back, developed it, and it kind of started off small and is, is becoming um, you know, a bigger thing across the country, really. So the main difference between forest school and general outdoor learning is that in the forest school setting, the children are not taught, they're, they're shown. So you know, we start off, we show them a skill, um, and then it's really free for them to go off and do whatever they want to do. So to use that skill and, and follow their own interests. So it fits in really, really nicely with, with the early years and foundation. Um, so it's very child-centred, it's led by their own interests, and it's all about encouraging the children to take risks with their own learning. Um, and it definitely does boost self-esteem um, of children with providing opportunities to achieve goals. And you, at the end, you, su you celebrate the successes of the children, you know, no matter what they've been doing. So Forest School at Roxham, this is our Forest School area. Um, we've got a fantastic woodland area. We're looking at developing um, on the other side of our field as well at the minute. Uh, we go outside whatever the weather, and there's our little saying, there's no such thing as bad weather, just inappropriate clothing. <laughs> so we will go out, you know, come rain or shine, um, which is a good, good title. Um, the only time we probably wouldn't go out is if it was you know, thunder and lightning and blowing a gale, because obviously you've got the, the trees and we don't want any accidents. So a session starts off um, in that meeting circle. The children come to school wearing their old clothes. Um, parents know when we have forest school and they're more than happy. Um, we start off sharing our forest school names, um, talking a little bit about what we're going to do. I'm Mr Vanderbilt Vulture, that's my forest school name. Um, we have a safety briefing just to remind them of all the things around the woodland which could be dangerous, hanging branches, you know, tree stumps, just general reminders, nettles, all that kind of stuff. Um, we talk to maybe teach the new skill, talk about the things that they could do, um, and then it's up to the children then to follow their own interests and to, to take their own learning wherever it, wherever it leads them. And then at the end, we all come back together, we share what we've been learning, the children can show us all the, the exciting things they've been doing and anything that interests them. And then, then that's our, our sessions. We obviously start at the beginning of each term and with any new class with our, with our rules, which are you know, general things about walking around the fire pit, not throwing stones or swinging sticks, and looking after the woodland. Um, we make sure that we take everything out of the woodland at the end of a session. Um, so it's just general things about you know, being kind to each other. <coughs> and sharing and taking turns, which is something that obviously we work on a lot. Um, and then with, as I said, it's become embedded throughout the school. Um, and at Roxham we do the creative learning journey and creative curriculum. And this is an, an example of a <coughs> creative <coughs> learning journey. I did a topic in year one called The Great Outdoors. Um, so there was loads and loads of forest school that we could link to, to all areas of, of the learning. Um, and I'll just go through a few of the subjects and how we kind of linked it to Forest School. There's things like maths, we went on um, 2D and 3D shape hunts, position and direction it was good for, orienteering, um, compass points and coordinates. And you know, I've done it with year one and I've done it with year six. And all of these things you can do to a greater or lesser degree, you know, with, with all year groups. English is obviously, uh, there's so much that you can do outdoors. Describing what you can hear, see, smell and touch. As an inspiration for writing, it's, it's, it's absolutely brilliant. Um, theme days linked to story writing. I've done a few Robin Hood days, um, so the kids have been outside dressed as merry men, merry people. <laughs> we've had, you know, uh, uh, we've made dens to hide from the sheriff. We've had made bows and arrows. 
we've um, had fires, made bread, cooked chicken, which we do obviously in the oven first and then just finish it off because <laughs> it's safer. Sausages, which are good. Um, and then that kind of just, when the children come in and, and, and write, their writing is so much richer for having had that experience of being Robin Hood for the day. Um, and then we've created information books, creating stories, retelling stories. Um, I've done some Shakespeare with my class, you know, uh, around the fire pit, which has been very good. And retelling stories of Thesis and the Minotaur. We've just been doing Greek myths and legends. Um, we went out with rope and, you know, we set up the, you know, what's it called? That's it, around the, the <laughs> labyrinth. Um, and there's me, I am a Minotaur, if you were <laughs> worrying. Uh, science, again, there's so much to link to science. Uh, den building linked to habitats, pond dipping, um, looking at how plants grow, mini beast hunts, um, lots of gardening, life cycles, melting and freezing, ice sculptures, they were really, really great. We, we went outside, it was just in the really, the really cold weather, and you just get some quite deep dishes with some string to put through, fill them with water and natural kind of materials, leave them outside, the next morning you can come and peel them off and you've got these wonderful kind of ice sculptures which you just hang from the trees. Um, really effective and really cool. So again, art and D&T, really uh, nice links to that. Tree spirits, which are one of the first things that we do. This down in the corner there, far corner. One of the first things we do um, in forest school because it's when children first go out, they, they don't want to get dirty and muddy. So making them go out and get dirty and muddy, kind of, it's a good starting point, and then they're not so worried. So to make a, a tree spirit, you just take your watering can, make a nice big mud pie, get a great big handful of mud, squeeze out the water, splat it onto a, a, a tree um, trunk, and just use natural materials to create little faces. It's really, really good. The kids love it, and you can spend all morning doing it. Uh, natural sculpture inspired by Andy Goldsworthy is good. Whittling carrots. Um, again, it's that kind of idea of showing them a skill of whittling a carrot, and then you know they can take that idea to, to go off and you know whittle their own um, sticks. Obviously, we use knives as they get you know a little bit older, and they're confident with with the kind of the skill of whittling using a potato peeler. Those kind of things using um, tools. Obviously, you do you don't just send them off with you know knives into the woodland and say come back in an hour. You kind of do it with small groups, one-to-one, -one, particularly with the knives and the, the lockers. Uh, dream catchers, charcoal drawings are great. After we've had a fire, we collect up the, the charcoal and, you know, you can use that to then do some pictures uh, a bit later. Autumn crowns are really nice. Um, you just get some card, a bit of double-sided sticky tape, go outside and collect nice leaves and beautiful colours and, you know, you've got a little crown. And natural painting is really good too. Go, just go off and collect berries, grass, mud, anything that you can make colour out of, mix it with a bit of water, and you've got natural <coughs> paint. Den building is one of the favourites, um, and it's brilliant. Everyone can do it, and you can link it to, up to the habitats, and it's just a really nice starting point. It's a nice starting point for any teachers who are you know, just new to it, because it's a very kind of easy thing that the children just love doing. And then cooking as well, which is one of those things you kind of, you need a bit of confidence, I think, before you start doing a bit of cooking. But marshmallows toasted on the fire is always good. Um, popcorn in the middle is a, a nice thing to do. Um, we've made burgers, which was a bit more kind of hair-raising than I thought it would be. <laughs> um, but it was fine, don't worry. And sausages, which were good, weren't they, Mississippi? <laughs> um, so why for a school? Well, it boosts self-esteem, allows for that first-hand experience. It does encourage creativity, um, encourages boys' writing, um, develops language communication, and it's exciting, fun, and inspirational. So, what more do you need? And to start, you, you, kind of, you just need an outdoor space, a few ideas, some enthusiasm, old clothes, and a few helpers, and you don't need a big budget. You know, literally, the first couple of sessions with tree, spirit, tree spirits, you don't need anything. You just need a watering can and a bit of mud. Um, and then from, from there you can start small, which is what we did, and now it's become kind of a whole school thing and embedded throughout. Um, and there's a few useful websites if you want to find out more. Um, 
forestschools.com is good, there's, there's tons of stuff there. Um, the Greenlight Trust has got lots of uh, ideas and if you're interested in doing training, there's level one, which is just sort of basic, which is, is really good. I did the level three, which is a, you know, a bit more kind of intense, but is well worth doing. And on Nature Detectives, um, there's tons and tons of really good um, resources that you can use out outside and in your classroom. That's it, really. Thank you very much.